Okay, we're taking a closer look at the inside of the uh, C1 stabilizer for the Norden bomb site. Here's the inside of the uh, switch plate. Uh, here's the big 16 pin connector. Uh, this is uh, pin 13 here, which is a uh, heavy duty ground. It grounds to this metal plate and then goes up to the connector for the bomb site head. The entire Norton system here, uh, there's no ground wires running uh, around. It's all grounded through the, the metal case. Uh, so uh, the stabilizer uh, base and the head will not work unless this uh, plate's bolted on and mounted securely. With the uh, front plate removed, we can see the uh, gyroscope here, your vertical gyro, uh, in the uh, what they call the carden. Uh, if I disengage this, this will rotate all the way around. You see there's a couple of bearings here that hold that in place. Uh, all the power is transmitted uh, to the gyro here through a, a commutator uh, at the top of the head here. Uh, on either side there's a couple of heavy duty brushes and then uh, inside you can see the uh, armature uh, where it's wound. Right here uh, there's a, um, a piece of Bakelite with some contacts on it. There's two sections on the top, two sections on the bottom, and then a, a brush here. Uh, this is so that the uh, servo or tor torque motor can keep the, um, uh, the gyro vertical. Uh, as it goes up slightly, it transmits 13 volts to the uh, torque motor that puts a brake on one side of the differential. Uh, causing this gear to rotate. And as this gear rotates back and forth, the uh, gyro uh, precesses one way or the other. If it goes way up, then it applies the full 26 volts, which would give it more of a, more of a turn. Uh, it's really an ingenious system. This uh, giant ring gear here uh, and the gyro can rotate a full 360 degrees and uh, when the uh, bomb site's in operation and you're in flight uh, this can be positioned anywhere uh, on that uh, 360 degree circle and uh, the entire thing will work uh, just beautifully. On the back of the uh, C1 stabilizer here you have your uh, servo or torque motor. Uh, this motor is always spinning and these gears here are always rotating this direction. Um, this purpose of this is to keep the gyro vertical uh, to eliminate the natural precession uh, that it has. Um, as the um, as the contacts on the side of the gyro uh, provide voltage here, uh, one clutch or the other engages, and then that causes uh, the entire ring gear assembly to rotate. <clears throat> okay, we're going to power up the uh, stabilizer base here, and you'll see that. Uh, gyro correct itself to vertical and the uh, the little slip ring mag magnets here uh, slowly correct that gyro to its vertical position. Let's see if we can catch a glimpse of the uh, Uh, the spinning. 
the gyro there. And uh, you can hear it start to come up to speed. Now at this point, we get this engaged. Now at this point, with everything in place, it's uh, it's pretty strong. It's really hard to move at this point. Really hard to move. And if I, if I pull it down, it corrects. If I push it up, it corrects right to vertical. It's almost impossible to move anymore. Disengage these here. And there, now I can I can rotate this ring gear somewhat. Disengage. Oh my gosh. There it is. At that point, it's uh, it's just not movable anymore. Uh, the thing is so strong. You can see this little differential here correcting for coming on and off vertical. As you rotate, it wants to stay that one direction. that magnet myself and that produces an air. We'll do the other direction. Without it, that in place, it continues to want to precess. So, I'll go ahead and power this down. On this particular gyro, I'm getting about 7 ohms on my ohm meter from brush to brush. One side is continuity to ground, and the other has continuity through uh, 
uh, through the brushes, through the switch, and into the uh, power pin on the 16-pin uh, cannon plug. Okay, uh, here's a lower angle look at that uh, big ring gear. We'll uh, power the sight back up here. See that uh, torque motor puts it right back in place. Works pretty hard on getting it back in place. So. Let's take a look around that. Here, it just kind of sits here and turns all the time until one of these are needed. And that rotates that ring gear to where that uh, voltage, these two electromagnets, go to zero. And then it knows your uh, gyro is vertical. Pretty ingenious. 